Welcome, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast online radio and TV network, restoring vitality to you and the planet. I'm your co-host, Scott Patton, and joining us, as usual, is the health coach at Life Enthusiast, Martin Patella. Hey, Martin, how are you doing today? Hi, Scott. I'm doing good. It's another wonderful summer, summer day, I think, where I am, which I like summer better. And uh, the picture you see now is uh, Andrew Dewey of Organiponics. And uh, we would like to introduce him to you, a wonderful enthusiast, because we think it's important to become revolutionaries. I know that uh, the most revolutionary act you can commit is to start growing your own food. That's right. We want everyone to be a rebel and uh, have good, healthy food. And it seems like the only way you can do that these days is by growing it or no person that is growing it and what type of person they are, whether they're, uh, you know, doing it the proper way or filling it full of GMOs and, and herbicides. So uh, welcome to the show, Andrew. Uh, tell us a little bit about organiponics because you've got quite a different um, take on the whole organic movement and on the whole uh, hydroponics movement too, which I think is absolutely fascinating. Okay, first of all, great to be here. Um, organiponics are, you know, basically what we do is we uh, design and build hydroponic indoor grow systems to allow um, just about anybody, anybody in the world, to grow plants, uh, produce, whether it's greens or herbs or, or uh, lettuces of, of almost any kind, um, in their home with ease. Um, it, you know, you don't have to have a green thumb. You don't have to be a farmer. A lot of the work is done for you. And at the, the end result is, is this fantastic lettuce, as you can probably see behind me, and one of the prototype systems that we have um, that you can enjoy, hopefully, on an ongoing basis with very little downtime uh, so that every day you can have a salad of some sort uh, with a meal or maybe even a full meal, depending on how much you eat. Uh, so the whole concept is is to have a, a system that works all the time. Andrew, I have some questions about this. I, I have about 10 years ago, I met a bunch of guys that were into hydroponics. And so I a little bit about it. Um, but the main question that I have is, okay, can I grow carrots? Can I grow potatoes? Can I grow tomatoes? Uh, can I grow parsnips? Uh, I understand the herbs, I understand the lettuce. But what about some like blueberries? Can I grow those? Like, is there you know a certain group of foods that work better with uh, hydroponics, or or can we do anything? Can I grow no, a, it, a pineapple tree? <laughs> I wish you could grow avocados and things like that, but unfortunately, there there is not um, a, a, that broad of a selection of things that you can grow. Um, plants that grow underground, like carrots, potatoes, beets, things like that. Uh, we have not tried it. I don't know whether you can actually even do it, to be honest with you. Um, we do have a system that we are developing right now that's a floor system that goes up about six feet. Uh, and we're testing uh, cucumbers, uh, full-size tomatoes, things like that. But the problem with these, these types of plants is they grow a flower and that has to be pollinated in order to get your fruit off of that plant. Now, you can artificially do that but it need, you need more than one plant to obviously do it. So we're still kind of playing around with that idea. We'd like to be able to have something like that out there. You can grow strawberries on systems. I haven't um, on the full size system, I would assume maybe blueberries are possible, but you know we're still too early in that process to know whether we can grow anything more than say uh, uh, large uh, pepper plants, tomato plants and cucumber plants, things like that. Well, what fascinated me about your system when I first saw it was the fact that uh, unlike the systems that my friends 10 years ago were showing me, which took up basically the whole living right. room, uh, yours are very, have a very small footprint. So tell us a little bit about how, how that came about and also how it works. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty cool. Uh, we use a, a vertical hydroponic technology. So in other words, rather than growing on a flat surface or a flat plane, we're actually stair-stepping it up in order to allow our plants to have more room or more real estate to grow on. Um, and what that allows us uh, is to get more plants 
per plant panel. But to add to that, is we also uh, have a separate uh, propagation station where we can grow our seed into a small seedling and then take that seedling and move it into the system so that we can leverage the amount of growth per, per system. So in other words, the system that you see behind me grows 16 plants, but in actuality, it really grows 32 plants because we're propagating uh, a small seed to a seedling. Um, on the, it's not, this is actually a prototype without that system built into it. I, I really don't show it. I can show you on a smaller system how it works on our, our mini herb garden. Um, or, and I have another system below me that, uh, that has that built in. Uh, it came about actually last fall. This is an older system that you see here. But anyway, what it does is it allows you to leverage the, the growth so that you always are growing plants. The first seven to 10 days of the growth cycle is going from seed to seedling. Well, we do this in a separate location in water rather than a nutrient solution, which is what you're supposed to do. And then we move that, that seedling into our grow panel for the, the, the remainder of that grow process, which is about, well, it depends on the product, depends on the light, but on average about 22 days. So therefore we can get uh, 15 cycles of grow out of our plants versus competitive systems, which average about 35 days, can only get about, about nine or 10 grow cycles per year. So we get about 50% more, more product. One of our viewers just put in a question, and I, and I should have asked this right at the beginning, like what is hydroponics? So the whole concept behind hydroponics is to be able to grow plants uh, in a medium without using any soil. So it's all done so, with uh, nutrients and water. Okay. So, so what you're talking about is you have a, uh, a system where you take the seeds, they grow them into seedlings, you take them out of that wherever they are, and you put them into the hydroponic solution where then they go from seedlings to the full mature plant. Yeah. So what happens is, is that during this process, you have a little plug and that plug is made out of nor what we use is made out of a cocoa husk and, and a peat moss. In fact, we're now experimenting with just cocoa husk with a, a core binding built into it. Um, and that seed already has nutrients in its seed pod. So it doesn't need any additional nutrients. In fact, additional nutrients is not good for the seed. It's, it's almost like um, when a baby is born, uh, you feed a baby breast milk or milk. You don't feed it human food. It's the same thing with a seed. You want to grow a seed into a seedling just with water. So once it gets to about, say, two inches tall or so, you take that small plant and then you transport that into your grow panel pocket, which are these little pockets right here. You can see that. I'm not sure if you can or not. Um, and it grows into a larger plant in a little over two, uh, three weeks. Wow. So... When I remember when I did some gardening with my parents, and uh, certainly I remember doing some gardening with a good friend of mine the other year, like last uh, spring ago, and we would put a whole bunch of seeds in a row, and then we would cover them up with soil, we would water them, and I'm pretty sure that a very, like, if all of the seeds grew, we wouldn't have had room, and a lot of them didn't, we had to thin, but I'm pretty sure that most of the seeds didn't make it. Uh, so do 100% of the seeds germinate when you go through this process? Well, the nice thing about propagating in a, in a, in a station uh, before you actually plant the seeds is that you can grow, you know, if this system grows 16 plants, you're probably propagating 18 plants just in case two of them don't grow. And a lot of that's just because of the seed itself. You know, it's not a good seed. Right. Uh, so it does give you that opportunity to get an actual live plant or live seedling to plant right into your system. So it gives I'm, you that benefit. So the reason I brought this all up was a head of lettuce in the grocery store is like $2, right? It doesn't matter if you're in Southern California or you're in Vancouver or you're in the Midwest. And I'm thinking that a seed is probably coming from a package of seeds that's $2. So I don't know if you get 100 or 200 seeds. So I'm basically thinking you could save a fortune in your food bill. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what we do is we actually provide a grow kit um, that conveniently is conveniently delivered directly to the consumer's door. And in that grow kit, it includes all the, the, the plug, the medium that you need. 
in order to plant the seed it includes uh, some standard seeds and it includes the nutrients that you have to put into your water in order to that's your plant food to actually grow the plant uh, after it becomes a seedling and um, these grow kits are sent out every other month so you get a 60-day supply and an, on average, it allows you to grow a plant for about 50 cents a plant versus $2 at the store, or in many cases, herbs and other types of greens are actually more than that. Right. So if and, you- And remember, that, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. But remember, this is also pesticide free and it can be organic. It's not always organic because it depends on the nutrient, um, but it is pesticide free and you can actually take lettuce right off the system and just eat it. Right. Because there's no dirt. No dirt. No, no pesticides. No, no uh, 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 bird droppings or any other issue that could affect that leaf. Yeah, the hogs. I was thinking of other things too. <laughs> bird dropping, and then you grossed me right out. Yeah, yeah, sorry about I was, that. I was, I was going to say some other things, but I'm glad I didn't. I was thinking the feral hogs uh, in California and Texas, they have become an issue in the organic fields. Yeah. Very, very true. Yeah. So you don't have any animals running through. You don't have any bugs running through. Um, no. I mean, you can have on rare occasions aphids or some sort of a invasive uh, bug that can come in and, and destroy your plants. But you can see those very quickly on a small plant and they can easily you can easily get rid of those with a with an organic spray. Um, I have not seen them you know, and since we've been doing our testing in homes rather than greenhouses. We have never had a bug problem. Um, and that's the whole point of this, right, is, is that this is something that you can do in your home and you can do it on an ongoing basis. Um, so tell us a little bit about how much space I'm going to need in my kitchen or my dining room or my sunroom, wherever I'm going to be doing this. Of course. So if, if your interest is to be able to feed yourself with lettuces and greens off of a system, and you want to make sure that you get a full-size plant, not just a little micro plant that, you know, you have to take three or four plants just to, just to put on two plates. Um, in order to do that, we our system, like the one you see here, is, is just under 24 inches wide. I don't know what that is in centimeters, whatever that number is. And it's about 16 inches deep. Um, so not very big. No, not at all. And so we have a smaller system, a mini herb garden system, that's only about 12 and a half inches wide. Now, it, it, the plants are a little closer together. They are in a vertical system. There's two rows of, of, of systems. And I can show you that uh, in, in just a second if you want to see sure. one of these systems. We'd love to see it. Yeah. And uh, those things are only 12 and a half inches wide, so they can easily fit on a countertop next to your stove where you're cooking. So you can just pull basil or mint or any type of an herb off of it and use it right in your cooking. So, well, Andrew, do you, I just have one quick question about the countertop. Do you advocate having it like by a window where it gets sun or in like your sunroom or do you like if your kitchen is say all enclosed and it's not really, yeah. um, it, all it gets is the incandescent light or whatever your lighting is, is it better yeah. to have it near a window? Well, you know, when I first started this business, I was all pro natural light. I wanted everything to be natural light. And at that time, this was back in 2012, 2013. And LED lighting wasn't where it is today. You know, it's improved quite a bit since then. And um, if you have a proper natural light to grow plants in your house, by all means, use it. But I would say 90% of the people out there don't have the proper light. So they're going to have to use uh, LED lights or some sort of an artificial light. Our systems, we sell them um, without the light uh, kit or as part of the, the system itself but they are available. We're not looking to make money on the lights per se. Um, that's not our interest. We wanna make sure that you grow a good quality plant. So I, I would say that maybe 10% of the people have a sunroom or a, maybe an, out, uh, you know, an attached greenhouse of some sort where they can grow their own plants without the lights, but the majority of people will need lights. Yeah, I'm thinking that you would need to have a light tunnel directly to the roof because if you don't have direct light coming off the top, it, there's just not going to be enough. Windows won't cut it. It has to be correct. top light. And the, yeah, the it's got to be yeah it per the perfect setup for, for you to do it with, with natural light. Yeah, I think it would be actually wonderful if you did have a, a lighting kit 
with LEDs because these days that's the way to go. Yeah, we're testing a lot of light kits right now. Um, some of them work really well. Some of them don't work at all, uh, and they and they claim to be grow grow lights. So it's it's actually um a little bit of a of a of a, uh, a headache to us just because we're trying to find that proper system. One of the issues that we have is that the the cannabis market here in the United States, uh, these guys are getting so much funding that they're not spending a lot of time trying to get the you know better pricing on their lights. They're just paying what what the going rate is. And it's really affected the that market. You know, the people in the LED lighting business, to my knowledge, are making pretty good margins on their product, which forces us to go overseas to uh, find manufacturers in places like China so that we can have them create our lighting for us. So we're using different uh, lights that are made here in the United States just to test, but we're also using lights that are made in China to test those also. Um, some of them work great, some of them don't. Um, this this system right here above me, that's a very old, what they call T5 light system. We're putting different types of light tubes in it to test it out. The system that's below me, don't know if you can see this or not. Um, Oh yes. Can you see that system there? That's a light, this is a light panel that, that we just purchased about a, two weeks ago or so that has about 45 watts of light that comes off of it. Um, that's all LED. That's working very, very well for us so far, but it's still a little too early in that process uh, to know whether it's gonna be the perfect light. Um, you really can't see it, but, but I've got some other, you can see the lights on some other smaller systems above me um, that I, I'll, I'll pick up the, the uh, computer so you can see them a little bit more in detail. But those are using, one's using a T5 light that's really not enough light, but we just wanna see how long the grow process is with it. And then another one is using a, I think it's a 20 watt um, uh, light, uh, LED light that does fantastically well. So we're getting there, we're just not, not exactly there on the lighting just yet. So I'm curious, um, a couple of things, one is, if I wanted to lift them up and move them to another place, am I going to be spilling water all over my house? It, it, it wouldn't be a good idea to do that. Now, the small systems that are only 12 and a half inches wide, the little herb gardens, um, they, the, the, it, it comes with a basin that has the propagation station built into it. And then it has a grow panel or a grow dome that sits on top. And if it's fairly snug above your basin, um, Water won't leak out, but it's it's still going to be kind of a clumsy carry to bring it to another location. So the bigger I systems, need to find a spot for it, put it in that spot, make sure I've got enough light on it, and then I don't have to worry. Yeah, and we have thought about actually creating a a, a cart of some sort where you can, you know, it's designed to fit a, a, a the countertop system so that it can roll. All you have to do is unplug the pump and the lights, which is just a one, a one plug because it fits right into a microprocessor. Um, that's that's connected inside the system. And all you would have to do is just roll it, unplug it, and then roll it to wherever you want to use it. Uh, we've had people ask for that already. And some people say, well, it, it, it's a necessary, uh, one of those necessary items that you have to have. I'm not sure if that's the case, but we'd love to be able to have it so it's convenient for anybody to use. Right. So how do I know when to turn on the lights and turn them off? You don't. The system does it for you. That's one of the, one of the great things. The microprocessor built in, um, the initial system is going to have a, a module in it that actually controls the timing for your lights and uh, your pumps or pump that, that's within the system. Um, and it's, it's all going to be manufacturer uh, built, built in by the manufacturer or us. And it's typically just an 18 hour on, six uh, hour off of the lights. But the pump itself is always on. It's continuously, well, it's always, it's on and off. Uh, 24 seven. So it's basically only on for about 25 seconds and then off for about 12 to 13 minutes. And then it turns back on again. So that's always working for you. All the consumer has to do is make sure that the water level is at, is at its proper level and to make sure that it's getting fed properly, um, which is, uh, you know, every one to two weeks, we, we, uh, you have to feed it some, some of the nutrients off out of its bottle. And that is all we, we provide a, an ongoing, a, a downloadable uh, app so that that consumer can be reminded to do these things. Uh, so if they forget, it's not, you know, it's not going to kill the plants. 
um, the, the app will tell them, hey, you need you may need to add some water. Check your water. Um, Wonderful. And, you know, the nice thing idea. is you don't use that much. Yeah. Yeah. Each plant, uh, we save about 90 to 95 percent in water usage for plants versus traditional soil farmers. Uh, inside this, behind this grow panel is a an aeroponic grow or spray system that actually sprays the back or the roots of the plants. Whatever doesn't absorb into the roots actually just drops right back into the basin um, and is, is, is used, you know, the next go around, the next time the, 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 the system turns on. So in a full cycle, you're using about 40 to maybe 50 ounces of water. And that includes at the very end when, you know, after about 45, 60 days, you need to replace what's in your basin because it's got too much of a sodium buildup, which is, you, know, you don't want too much sodium in your plants. It's not going to grow a proper plant. So that assumes that you've got to throw some of that away at some point, point in, in that cycle or uh, between two cycles. Right. So, um, yeah, that's really cool. I think this would be a great time for you to, to for us to have show and tell. Because okay. I was just looking at your site and I noticed a picture twirling around of the of the unit, and I thought, well, this would be a really good time probably to show everybody exactly what it is we've we've got. If okay. you have one. Well, let me move this microphone because I don't think this is working. Out of the way. It is working. Um, oh, it is. So you can hear me. Interesting. All right. So this is just working for me to be able to hear you, and that's it. So you, the my mic is actually working. It's not coming out the computer. So I anyway, moved it. The sound changed. Okay. Um, I'm going to move it a little bit closer again. So what you have right behind me here is a counter 16. Oops. <laughs> well, looks like we have knocked off uh, a cable or something and uh, lost the connection because that's a freeze frame. <laughs> it is. Um, yeah. And my thoughts were that uh, kitchen counter spaces at a premium. I couldn't possibly entertain having this next to my stove. You know, no. this in my house, this would have to be somewhere, I don't know, off the kitchen or maybe in the corner of the kitchen somewhere. And definitely, uh, definitely, I think we need to help Andrew figure out the lights because what's the point of? buying a half of a system, you need to buy the whole system. Yes, that's right. Um, yeah, you need a big kitchen if you're going to be having your garden in your kitchen. Yeah, for sure. But it's a pretty cool idea to be able to do, you know, have 15 different herbs and just reach over and a little bit of this, a little bit of that, put it in and then reach over and grab your salad, put it in. Sure, absolutely. That's wonderful. Most enjoyable. Well, we we see Andrew dropped off. Maybe he'll come back soon, God willing. Um, yes. I actually would love to see it in more complex where we would also help people do sprouting. I was going to ask him about that, right? Like yes. sprouts are actually an excellent nutrient source, right? Like he's, he's proposing sprouting one seed at a time in his uh, plug, which is cool. Yeah, because he's making the plant. Yeah, but I think we should also work on getting a sprouting station into the house where you can take a, a quart or something like that, quart-sized vessel where we would put, a, I don't know what, um, an ounce of seed in it and uh, help people figure out how to sprout things, you know, like sprout broccoli. Yeah, I love sprouts. And the frustrating part about making them was the fact that the the roots and the sprouted part would get into the mesh. So yes. I could, you know, I could never get it out. Yes. That's the pain in the, um, the pain in the sprout pain in the mesh. This is the, uh, orga, orgy ponics, organ, po organ uh, website, which is really fascinating. We've got the tabletop. This is what it looks like. And so it has two sides to it. Yeah. And yeah, there it is. That's kind of cute. Or it has oh. one side. Depends okay, this is the one sided. So we have a one sided or two sided. Yeah. Oh, just going to present to everybody in that way. 
you can see it. And here we have our 90% less water. I was going to ask him that question, but he answered it before I could. And 70% less produce costs. And really, when you think of I refused to buy this when it hit a dollar. Yeah. And now it's at two bucks. It's crazy. Right. And 10 months to pay, but so your savings will pay for start, the unit within. Start after one year. Yeah. And this is what the shelf unit looks like. Right. Very nice. So that's and the plants. And then this is the countertop unit, 16 plants. And this is what he was talking that's about. The it being deeper, an angle. Right? What's that? Well, the shelf, the shelf unit was a steeper rake on it, right? Like it yeah. was less, less depth. Yeah. And then we have the tabletop unit, which is the one that has two sides. Yeah. And this was the app that he was talking about, which I thought was really cool. It tells you when to put everything in. I imagine different plants have different uh, nutrients. I mean, it's basically it's water, and you have to put nutrients inside it, right? Yeah. Yeah, you need to probably make sure that it's related plants because they will all be in the same bath. So yes. Good point. I, I'm visualizing that things that you could grow in this medium would have to be the uh, top side, so bok choy or uh, or lettuce or herbs, arugula, that sort of thing. Yeah, if you're interested in getting the orga organ organiponic system, the information will be. In Unfortunately, Andrew is. Uh, I don't know what happened. Succumb to the gods I of technology. Thinking of the, you know that that movie where the plant eats you. I forget what it was called. Triffids, I think. Triffids or something. You know, I was thinking, yes, yeah, so they got him. Yeah, but yeah. obviously, he can't get back on for whatever reason, and uh, I'm sure he's upset about that, and, and it's unfortunate. But to his contact information and how you can get it, put it into the description before we uh, before we finish editing this. Uh, episode and get it out to you so you'll have all that information if you are concerned about health issues about uh, you know what what you're doing whether you're doing everything right or you're doing everything wrong and you need some advice uh, martin is our health coach so you can always give him an email and he'd be happy to talk with you and see what he can do to help you with whatever your issues are so right. well, martin if somebody wants to do that how can I hold it here? Right. Indeed. Call me at 866-543-3388 or um, reach me on the website at life-enthusiast.com. Thank you very much for listening. I'm looking forward to uh, hearing from all of you. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This has been the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV a Network, restoring vitality to you and the planet. We'll see you next time.